our weekly visit with senior producer from NFL Films, Greg Cosell, also co-host of ESPN's NFL Matchup Show. And his appearance every week is brought to you by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Greg, we've got uh, an interesting first-year quarterback here that Bills fans are going to see in ah. Sam Howell. And yes. uh, I, th- I think it was a guy that was a victim of having a down senior year at North Carolina after a, a fantastic junior year. And because he's only 6'2", he ends up being a fifth-round pick. But here he is, and he's playing well. Yeah, I actually think he's six feet, Brownie. So, um, but you're right. He he was viewed as a descending player based on his final year at North Carolina, certainly coming off the year prior. And given his height, there was a sense that, okay, descending player, six feet. Uh, what are the, the percentage chances based on sort of the historical record that he turns into a good quarterback? Now, he started three games. So we're not going to sit here and say he's on his way to being great. But I have to tell you, um, I watched the game, of course, last year, the final game of the season and the two games this year. And he's showing a lot of traits that that you really like for a quarterback. Um, Number one, and I'm sure it's a function that he's always been shorter, is he's an over-the-top thrower. And you don't see many over-the-top throwers in the game anymore. Drew Brees was an over-the-top thrower, another six-foot quarterback. He's really tough in the pocket. He does not bail. He stands in in muddy, noisy pockets with people around him and delivers the football. And he is willing to turn it loose and make difficult throws, which I always believe is an important trait in this league. And he has more than enough movement to be a a quarterback that can make those second reaction plays. So he's shown a lot through uh, these first two games. Obviously a big road win when they were down 21-3 to Denver in Denver. You don't see that very often coming back uh, against the Broncos like that on the road. Yeah, speaking of being down against the Broncos, what is it about Sam Howell, er- this Eric Bieniemy offense and the offensive weapons that the commanders have that they've been able to come back twice now in the fourth quarter to start the season? Yeah. Well, you know, I think Howell, uh, you know, probably a lot of that is just mentality. Um, but also you have to execute Maddie. I mean, there's no, there's no brilliant answer for that. Uh, you know, obviously against, uh, Denver this past week, they were down big and it would require him to make throws. And, uh, I think they actually have a really good system as well in terms of what they do with their route concepts. There's a lot of ways that they overload zones. Um, you know, they, they do a really good job with their receiver splits because all these things, receiver splits really dictate a lot of, of uh, how coverage gets played. Um, so, you know, you could say, for instance, oh, it's cover three, but you can play cover three multiple ways, and receiver splits can dict- dictate how you play it. Uh, so, you know, I think they're really, really good with those kinds of things, and he's just made some really good throws. Look, I'm sure it's been a highlight all week, and I actually broke down the play in the matchup show this week, but his 30-yard touchdown to McLaurin, it was a really well-designed concept, but it was a big, big-time throw, and that was not an easy throw. And then the other part of the offensive equation, Greg, is obviously the addition of Eric Bieniemy as the offensive coordinator. Yeah. I would say one of the more interesting things to come out of the first couple of weeks, um, we've noticed that the Bills have been susceptible to screen plays on defense through the first two weeks, and we see Bieniemy using screens sometimes on down and distances that don't indicate a screen could be coming. I mean, he did some on second and five. Um, there were some interesting choices by him to use the screen game on a typical screen game down and distance. What do you make of that? Well, it's funny you say that because obviously Eric B. Enemy comes from Andy Reid. Andy Reid has always been a phenomenal screen coach. Um, you know, they had a great screen on second and 14 this past week to start the fourth quarter, and it was beautifully, beautifully designed the way they did it, and they pretty much got Gibson. Uh, That's who they threw the screen to. There was really no one out there other than the man defender who was covering Gibson, and it was an easy block for the offensive line. Um, And, you know, so they've done a really nice job with how they get to screens. Uh, Because ultimately, what you want is you don't want a number of defenders out there to to be in front of the screen. You, You know, you want... 
you want in an ideal world you'd like one defender two at most but they do a really good job with that you're right brownie and uh and that one really stood out to me because it was second and 14 and they threw the screen to gibson and he had so much room to run it turned into a 36 yard reception Flipping to the commander's defense, we know their defensive line is one of the toughest in the NFL, yep. especially to start the season with the amount of pressure they can put on the quarterback using just four guys. They have a really talented four guys up front. Um, all f- all four of them put more than or registered more than five pressures in that game last week against the Broncos. So when you're dialing up a game plan to go against a defensive line that the commanders have, what's the recipe for success to be able to find some success against a really tough defensive line? Well, Matty, I think that the the Bills will try to do some of the things they did last week. I mean, they probably did it last week to get Josh Allen back on track, but you want to get quick game throws. You want to minimize the pass rush because if if you get the ball out quick, the pass rush becomes a non-factor. Now, obviously, when it's third and long, then it's a different scenario. Um, It'll be interesting to see. The the commanders are a a big – they play a lot of what we call big nickel with three safeties. And because the Bills are now a, a much bigger 12 personnel team, although they played a little less of it this week than they did week one, but they, they're clearly going to continue to play it. They're probably going to get a lot of big nickel with three safeties on the field. Um, Curl can match up to tight ends. Uh, the you know We'll see how they feel about matching up to Kincaid and Knox. They're both good receiving tight ends. Um, but I think, you know, as we saw, and you guys were, are well aware of this, as we saw last week, there was really a dedicated plan to re- develop a timing rhythm passing game, which doesn't require much reading by the quarterback and get the ball out so that Josh could get into a rhythm and and not feel, and, and the play calls by nature were not really asking him to drop back and, and if he didn't see it to move around. So I think they'll probably want to continue to do that. Flipping it back over to Washington's offense, Greg, we know that they have, you know, three speed type weapons in yep. Samuel, Dodson, and McLaurin. And all three of them can threaten all three levels of the defense yes. in passing concepts. How has the enemy deployed them? Has he purposely mixed it up? each of the first couple of weeks, sometimes series to series, or have those three players settled into roles that can be defined per se within the concept of the passing game? Uh, I mean, I think there's always a tendency here and there, Brownie, but I, but I think they've moved them around, which is, you know, another uh, tactic that uh, the enemy brought with him from yeah. Andy Reid. you know, McLaurin will lined up as the boundary X, um, but they move their receivers around. It's you, you can't just hone in and say, this is where he's going to be. Um, they do a lot of that. They play out of two tight ends as well. They're very diverse with their formations and their receiver distribution and location. Um, so, no, it, it's – and it's always, I think, early in the season – even though Bienemy may have a track record, and he certainly does with the Chiefs, now he's with a, with a new team with different personnel. So as you know, Brownie uh, and Matty, you probably know this as well, um, during the season you're kind of working through the early part of the games to see what right. you're going to get from teams because it's still early in the season. So, you know, w- while coaches often coach against coaches, sometimes when they're with a new team, you have to wait and see how they feel about their personnel and how they're going to deploy them. Yeah, and in in addition to those three wide receivers, they've also been able to use Brian Robinson as a good complement to those wide receivers, Um, especially in the second half of that game against the Broncos. He really started to show up. Um, How is Biennemi using the running back in in Brian Robinson, and, and why has it worked through two weeks, especially in this last week, registering some big numbers? Well, they want to run the ball, Matty. They're not uh, they are not one of those teams that wants to drop back 40 or 50 times. They do want to run the ball. Robinson is a physical, competitive runner. He's not necessarily a big playback, but he's a sustaining back, and they want him to be a foundation of what they do on offense. Um, 
last week through the first half, he wasn't, they weren't, were not getting much done in the run game. And the second half, it started to click a little bit. Um, obviously, the score dictated that maybe they couldn't stay with the run as much as they would like. But in, in a normal game, they want to run the ball. I mean, I, my sense is uh, in a normal game, they would like Robinson to have 20 carries. Um, and he, and he's he's the kind of back that can wear you down. And while he's not truly explosive, guys, he's a little he's got a little more juice than you might think. He's not just you know three yards in a cloud of dust. So you know if this game is just played out normally without you know let's say the Bills getting ahead big, then I think you'll see Robinson be a significant factor in the run game. I know it's only been two games in his NFL career here. Greg, but what is your take on Emmanuel Forbes? You know, their top draft choice. Yep. He's starting. He has an interception yeah. on his resume already. Long, tall corner. It's a little bit of a slender build, but what what have you made of his play through yeah, the he's, first two weeks? He's a really good player, Brownie. Yeah, I, I did him, obviously, coming out of Mississippi State. He can play press. He can play off. Um, he's really quick to the ball. You know, he's obviously long-legged just by the nature of his build, but that doesn't really seem to impact his his quickness, and he's got some suddenness to him. You know, he's a really good corner, and he's shown throughout his career in college, and he had the pick last week. Obviously, it was a miscommunication, but he still made the pick. Um, that when he does get his hands on the ball, he catches the football. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting how they play. No, they're you know, they're not necessarily a matchup defense. So, you know, um, I think you'll see Fuller at left corner, Forbes at right corner. That's in their nickel. Yeah. Um, when they played um, uh, big nickel, St. Juiced was the right corner and Fuller was the left corner. Forbes did not play in the big nickel. Um, okay. They had a third safety, Butler, um, and he was, you know, and he also played in the dime package. So, um, you know, We'll see. You know, obviously Forbes is a really good player. I like him a lot, but he played right corner and fuller left corner when they were in uh, their nickel or dime. Staying with rookies, what have you seen out of Osiris Torrance and Dalton Kincaid through their first two games in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, Kincaid's going to be a big factor in, in this offense, and it'll probably increase as the season progresses. Um, you know, obviously the first game was a little bit of a struggle. This game was a certain kind of game, the, the one they just won against the Raiders, to try to get back on track. So there wasn't much verticality in this game by design. Um, but he's capable of that, Kincaid. But uh, there was one play I really, really liked. I think it was in the second half where um, he hit him right in the middle of the field. I thought that was, you know, the kind of play that, you know, you ultimately want to see, um, you know, and I thought that, you know, that was just a really good example of, of, of sort of play calling more than anything else. Um, but um, uh, Torrance, I think he's he's been a little up and down, but I think you can see what kind of player that he is. I think he'll be a good run, def a good run blocker. Um, I think that the uh, pass pro will come more as he plays. Um, but uh, I think he'll be a really good player. You know, just look, it takes time. It often takes time for offensive linemen. We did see, Greg, that there are reports out of Washington. Logan Thomas is out for this week. Yep. He's still in the concussion protocol. I know they have some other athletic players like Cole Turner at the tight end position. Do you think it, it changes their approach much, if at all? I don't think it changes it at all. Uh, Turner was a player they really liked. He's big, long, athletic, came out of Nevada. Um He's almost more like a wide receiver in some respects, Brownie. So they'll play him and they'll play John Bates. So they do still have two tight ends that are quality players. So they still can line up in 12 personnel. I don't think that that changes their approach or their philosophy of how they want to play at all. And then looking at the Bills offense, one facet of their offense, the run game against the Raiders really kind of popped off. You saw James Cook have 123 rushing yards and Damian Harris and Latavius Murray were successful on the carries that they got as well. You saw Josh Allen only had seven rushing yards. You said the Washington Commanders are a team that really wants to focus on running the ball, and we could see that a lot going forward. The Bills, with the quarterback that they have and Josh Allen, you know, not the not the focus of the offense because of the type of arm that Josh Allen has. But what did you see out of that run game and maybe how it could impact things moving forward if it continues to be as consistent as we thought as we saw it was against the Raiders? Yeah, I, I think to me, ultimately. 
we'll see how they continue with the run game because what struck me was that nine of Cook's 17 runs, and granted, they were ahead, and they started to pull away in the second half, so we don't know if this is what they want to continue to do or not, but nine of Cook's 17 runs came as an eye back with Allen under center. I'm very curious to see if they kind of move a little bit in that direction and try to develop more of a run game in a more conventional way with Josh under center. Now, one play they love is sort of that, that sprint draw. It's, it has, there's yeah. a lot of elements to this, this sprint draw that they run. Um, they may not even call it sprint draw uh, because there's different O-line splits. It's, it's, it's kind of a tough play to, to evaluate for me because it's, it, it looks different all the time, but it, 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 it's in the sprint draw family. Um, obviously that's out of the gun, but, I'm curious to see, guys, if they continue to run with Allen under center and have sort of a more conventional run game and feel like, hey, let's line up, let's try to be physical, and let's run the ball as opposed to the run game being an offshoot of the pass game. That would that would seem to make sense to me this week, Greg, especially. I mean, wouldn't you rather try to dictate to this defensive front, let your linemen fire off the ball, not all the time, but... Right. enough to kind of keep them honest, number one, and at least give your offensive line the feeling that, hey, let's dictate to them instead of backing up in pass pro for three quarters of the game. And I think that's a great point, Brownie, because, you know, the bottom line is this is one of the best D-lines in the league. You know, we haven't mentioned Jonathan Allen or Deron Payne, and we should because they are really, really good inside. And Torrance obviously is going to get one or both of them throughout the course of the game. And you don't want to ask – this O-line to have to be in a reactive mode for a good part of the game. You want them to feel like they can come out and, and you know, to use the football term to hit them in the mouth, as it were. And you you'd want to feel like you can see how that goes. Um, you know, so I agree with you. I, I think you might want to line up. Again, that doesn't mean you start every drive on first down and, and just hand it off. But I think that needs to be an element of your offense. One last from for me, um, we've covered a lot of the storylines of this game. What do you think this game comes down to between these two teams? Um, you know, I, I, I think it, it, it with the Bills, I think it always comes down to efficiency on offense because, you know, Josh Allen is, is, a, is one of the most intriguing quarterbacks in the league and that he's so so knockout artist based that he can make big plays any given week. Obviously last week, though he did not do that. Obviously he had the, the 42, the 40 yarder to Davis, which was on third down in the fourth quarter. Um, he obviously made the incredible throw to Shakir for the touchdown, which was a great, great play, truly an unbelievable play. Um, he can make those plays every week. So the question is, the turnovers. And this is not a profound statement, but obviously we saw a game last week where there were no, no turnovers. And so it became kind of a methodical blowout. They never gave the ball back to the other team. They were able to sustain. One thing about this Bills offense these last number of years, as you guys know, which is, you know, everybody talks about quarter third down being the quarterbacks down. The Bills are great on third down. And as long as they don't turn it over, their offense tends to really be good. It can be good in, in multiple ways. It can be good methodically, and it can be good uh, with big plays. So that is really kind of what, what to me, most Bills games come down to because of, you know, that because of the quarterback. Um, I guess I would be surprised defensively if they gave up a ton of points. But on the other hand, as, as Brownie pointed out, Washington has three really good receivers, really good receivers, and they're tough to cover. Yeah, and it, it's interesting that you mentioned third down because that was going to be my next question, Greg. So fantastic segue here. Um, since 2022, the Bills' offense is the best third down conversion offense in the league. Yep. And since 2022, the Washington defense is the best third down defense <clears throat> in the league. What We know why the Bills are good in converting on third down. What is it about Washington that makes them so effective in defending on third down? It's because they often force – long down and distance situations, or is it a little more complex than that? Yeah, I, I certainly don't know offhand, Brownie, you know, what their third and, and long, you know, how many they face. Right. But they certainly have a really strong pass rush. I think we can say that without, you know, 
uh, with no hesitancy. They can rush the quarterback and they can rush the quarterback both outside and inside. So it's not as if they just have one pass rusher that you feel, OK, if we take care of him, we're good. I mean, those two guys inside are really, really good, Allen and Payne. And they can bull rush. They can drive interior alignment right back into the pocket. So there are going to be Josh Allen's second reaction movement plays in this game. So the question is, what are the results of those plays? You know, that that to me becomes a critical point. You know, I thought that Josh Allen in this past game against the Raiders was very conscious of not you know, of, of not making the kind of play that could really hurt you. Now, you know, it depends how this game plays out. You know, sometimes you need those plays. You need a big play depending on how a game goes. Um, so we'll see. But their pass rush is going to pose some problems at times in this game. And how Josh and the overall offense react to that could be a, a determining factor in how this game plays out. All right, Greg, thanks as always. Enjoy the weekend and the oodles of football that will ensue, and we will catch up with you next week. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thanks.